3D. I mean, otherwise they they like when you go to try to make the arc, they loosen up and they get bigger. Yeah, the one I was using yesterday was like someone typed yeah. in line three. I don't know who's typing. Mine very. Oh. Or ask your teacher to type it for you. Hi, so let's make sure that we remember a couple things. We do the best things. This is super loose. Um, so, how do we find those mid points? So, look at the centroid. And actually, we might want to draw some pictures of this. I, I could probably print this for you guys if you want the reference back. But, um, but also, you can just like memorize your names. Right? The centroid is what lines? The lines coming from. Okay, so. Angle points and. Vertices. What do we call those things? Well, what's the midpoints and vertices. It was the. Median, right? It's the middle. Right? The median goes from the vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side. So, if you want to make a note, this is normally what kids fall into the trap of. Centroid, the nickname I would call it, to be able to remember why is it called the centroid. Do you guys remember what we talked about yesterday? It's okay if you don't, because I don't really expect you to, but... It's sweet when you do. We talked about how, well, depends. In the beginning or towards the end? Probably right at the end. We talked about the circumference and how you can put like a circle, but right. and then oh, yeah. that like the becomes the highest value. It's the center of balance or the center of mass. Oh, we can put that. Literally, the point of a centroid is to be the center of balance. Yeah. Like, I could go home, cut a triangle out of lumber, find the midpoints of both sides, draw the lines to those midpoints, that point is where it will balance. Perfectly. Literally perfectly. Wow. Wow. Don't believe me? I, I, That's why those carnival games that have, like, that one row with, like, those, like, that ladder thing in the center. Where the yeah, yeah. So, I want to see some real math. Well, I might find it quickly once we learn. No. Oh, no. We'll clean that up later. I have wood triangles. Okay. Well, I'll show you at some point. Max, I'm magic. I promise I'll show you at some point. I have real, actual wood. Aha. We found it. So, any of these triangles. Right? And these are interesting triangles. We have a 30-60-90, 45-45-90, and a 45-60-70. Oh, this seems interesting. Let's try this. Okay. So there is a... Hold on, I'm trying to think about what to balance on. This is kind of too big of a top. Use your pencil. Uh, yeah, yeah, actually, I'm probably going to. There's another pencil. Wait. What? Oh, it'll be a cool. Are you serious? Yeah. I don't believe it. You can Good. I'm glad you don't. Know. Now, of course, if we didn't have a ruler, this is about 20 and a half centimeters. What's 20 and a half cut in half? 10 and a fourth. 10 and a fourth. So I did that side. What is. Just about 28 cut in half. 14. And of course, this won't come out perfect. Now, if my first two midpoints are pretty good, my third one should verify and hit the same intersection point that I've already seen. What's half of 25? 12.5. Math. So, notice they're close. Right? I, I, I'm doing this really quickly. Let's see. No way. 
<laughs> so the problem is that this is textured. Like if you feel this, it's oh, actually yeah. textured. So it's binding. Like actually, hold on. Let me just try to look through this. Not when you measure this. Wait, I'm sorry. For so there is genuinely a point on this triangle where if we get it to not now it's on a rounded object at this point. But if we got it to stand on a flat object, it would literally. Yeah, it's like Indian compass. Right, like wow. it is the center of balance. Mathematical. So the medians create our center of balance, right? The circumcenter, as we talked about yesterday, does it what? Oh, it would if we like get it. So actually, if I drilled a tiny, like, tiny dimple right in there so the pencil had something to rest up into, it would genuinely work. Like, people make, uh, like, um, what do I want to say, art, but I'm not thinking of, people make, like, statues or things like this, that literally you'll have, like, a big old triangle up on one point, like a cone, like, pointing up, and, you know, people look at it like, oh my gosh, how's that happen? Like, they just measured it. They just measured and drew the medians. It's not, like, some magic thing. Although the math counts shirts this year say that math is magic. So the circumcenter, no wait, read up here. What lines do we connect for the circumcenter? Um, uh, there's a bisector. Wow, that's my blue pen. Perpendicular bisectors on each side of a circle. The perpendicular bisectors. So the circumcenter will end up with your circle around the triangle using all of the vertices on the circle, it might be in your triangle, but a lot of times it's outside your triangle. That is the circumcenter. Then the in center, the angle bisectors. Right, now wait. Angle bisectors versus medians. Hmm. Even if that one, it bisects the angle, like it has to bisect the line of the angle, right? Or it just like get by it all the time? Are angle bisectors and medians the same? I feel like they are. I mean, they're like the one that bisects. Why would they, they make a new thing? Does it look like it's bisecting? Does this triangle end up congruent with this triangle? No. no. Oh. Would this triangle end up congruent with this triangle? Yeah. Depends if these are congruent, right? Well, if those are congruent, then we could like. Potentially like side angle side our way through. Or... I still I'm still not very confident with that though. Well, if if those two sides are congruent, then they would be the reflection path and then the that angle down there that's the bisector. So it would be the same as if those two were the same. Well you if, right? Different. If. Well let's figure that out as we go. Right? Nothing likes an investigation. So we need to remember from yesterday, we are, I'm going to go ahead and skip 8-3, um, actually the centroid. So we don't have an 8-3 on our paper. We're going to come back to 8-3. So hear me when I'm saying we're skipping it. And we're just going to make separate triangles all on our own. And we're going to see, can we make our triangles balance? So we'll come back to that. But the two that I really want to do right now are here. We want to do the circumcenter. So grab this, the final page. So for circumcenter, we should write on our paper, circumcenter is made with what lines? The perpendicular bisectors. So we need to find the perpendicular bisectors. So I'm going to turn on my camera in just a second.
Now the perpendicular bisectors. Oh, so these don't necessarily nicely go through vertices. They're just perpendicular bisectors. Well, if it's a bisector, what do we need to do to find how? Ah, we do that over halfway trick, right? So if we have this, our perpendicular bisectors can be found. If I make a guess more than halfway, now don't go a lot more than halfway, and if you need to tweak how your pencil is sitting in here, make sure your pencil is turned at an angle that it will work well for you. I'm turning my pencil over. Well, hey, leave that up here. I'll, I'll fix it. Go a little bit over half. Make sure you keep your point down. Yeah, my compass isn't tight enough. This works easiest if you can rotate your paper. Remember that. So honestly, I don't need to grab my straight edge until I do all of these arcs. So this is going to be a lot of arcs. Uh, that may not have been halfway. Crud. Well, ignore that arc. This is going to be a fun looking paper. I think this was a bad idea. I made my one eyepiece way big. Hey, I'm sorry. I have to take this. Um, you guys keep going. Then we want to use our straight edge to connect those. And then that point of concurrency should then, if we use the compass, circle around it. Sorry, I just finished talking about class. Deb? No, you're fine. I, I have class of five kids right now, and they're pretty awesome. So they'll keep going on that activity probably. Um, See, I thought I was thinking too soon. Today, today. yeah, it just showed up from Express Scripts yesterday, so we're getting on it today. So you said like a week and a half or two weeks. You want me to get Uh, okay. I was, I was wondering, um, there's an RSD facility right up, actually near my work here. Um, I was curious if you guys would be able to tell me if they do the blood work that we need. Um, it's Ohio State Family Medicine at Burlington. It's a newer home location. It's like 160 West Wilson Bridge. Oh, that's fine. I, I've got the phone number here. I can call and ask. I assume that you guys have like a list of them. Oh my. Yeah, I didn't want to call them. Really call them the the Yeah. 
So this is a group of uh, eighth graders who are two years accelerated, and we're currently doing the drawing assemblies. So we're having fun with uh, you know drawing with compasses and stuff. Yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, this is their regular math class because they've actually been identified as gifted in mathematics, and then we accelerate them at least one full grade level. So these kids have, have actually double accelerated. Um, they're two years advanced. Yes, yeah, that's easy. That's Worthington schools. I actually teach at Phoenix Middle School. It's an alternative post program. That's awesome. Well, cool. I'm glad um, that I know there's not as much work. I was trying to figure out what I need to do it like this week or next week. I, was like, I thought she had said like three or four days, but I knew I missed it. So I was doing another thing, so she called. So there are 10 to 14 days, and we'll find an OSU facility, and uh, we'll get it taken care of. Okay, now how do I get to Oh, yeah, just, start, just started today, so don't feel any difference yet. Perfect. Well, thank you so much. Yes, yeah, she said as soon as I get on this, she will to start keeping on the like, I was just going to keep on a log on my phone unless something seems, seems you know, a piece of me. Perfect. All right. Well, thank you so much. All right. You guys do the in center also? I just assumed since you're awesome, you maybe already did it. But it's like, this isn't team right No, but I did draw a circle. I did draw a circle. So that. And this eyeball. So, guys, one other thing of why we use three. Hey. Hold up, listen to what I'm saying. One of the other reasons why we use three of these lines instead of just two is notice the first two can meet and my third could be off. That would indicate that something has happened. Right now, you can actually see the fact that I drew two lines here really well through that camera, but that was just because I realized I was slightly off my my eye kind of intersection, right? Because these, these things kind of look like eyes. So let's go ahead and kind of nickname that's like our eye, right? To find that perpendicular bisector, we use those eyes. So those all meet up at like here. If we then place my compass center on there and my compass pencil on one of my vertices, it should fully encompass. Uh -huh. I yeah, it might be slightly off because we're just now starting. And if your compass moves at all. So that is what we do with a circumcision. It should, if we do it perfect, which of course we're working with like physical tools, if we get it perfect, it will perfectly hit all of these, which if we want to see an example of doing it perfect, you guys can go ahead and do in center. I'm going to do circle center with a triangle up here. Remember what we talked about yesterday, how this will work for any triangle? Oh, this is going to force isosceles. I don't want isosceles. Give me a scalar. Well, mine's straight one in You didn't write it down. It's on you. Uh, the points for a circumcenter triangle Angle bisectors. So you need to go back and remember how did we find those angle bisectors? Well, do you just want to do an in center with this one? I guess I can make my triangle try to match what we have. 
How do we find the angle bisectors, Athena? Less than one? Oh, yes. Okay. Okay, so that's like less than half. From this, from vertex? Well, go back on your paper, right? Where did we do the angle bisector? Yeah. Uh, so, so you did a thing, and then you did a few afterwards. Oh, we did one big... Go back and look at this, guys. We did one big arc, and then two littler arcs. It didn't actually matter how big the big arc was. Right? So, from this vertex... I'm actually going to flip this. From this vertex, watch me once, then you can do it. Watch me. We arc so that those points are equidistant from the vertex. Then we do arcs off those intersecting points. So whatever size I make my compass, I just need to keep it. So then, that one, and keeping it the same size, uh, that one. Sound effects, they are important. I'm going to change color up here. So, again, look if you need to. From this vertex, where my pointy point is, I'm going to do one arc to grab both of the other lines. Now, of course, my triangle looks a little different than the one that you're working with. Then... I put my point on those intersections. This can be whatever size you want, but, well, since I just started doing that, I'm going to use that and... Yes. Oh, my Lord. Ah, I just changed my size. I'll come to you. No, it doesn't have to be more or less or anything specific. It just has to be. Now, hold up, hold up, leave that. You can use that, but then you can make the other arcs in here. You know what I mean? Here, I'll show you. You're not in a bad spot. You're actually perfectly fine. Yes, so you can now pick a fixed one. It doesn't have to be very big. Because you're from C, right? So that is really close, but that is your. Now, if you wanted, you could also have made this like a bigger and that should line up to the same. You can just place another thing. Sorry, guys, these compasses are new this year. I think they just have gotten metal ones. They don't really have metal ones anymore. <laughs> so if I go back a bit now, I can say this. So when your size gets changed, you gotta fix it. So okay, I went back I and fixed my arc. I, I just drew a line and it immediately disappeared. I think it's a right triangle. So then what do you do after the right triangle? You get all three. What? Oh, it's what? Oh, it's all three. What the hell? Now the third one should line up with where the other one was. Where the other two lined up. Should line up with where the other one was. Where the other two lined up. All right, I'm going to do it again if you need to see it again. I have opened up an arc from my vertex. I make a large arc of that. Then, from the points that intersected, 
arc and triangle, I am making two more arcs to find the intersection of them. From there, we use our compass. Sorry, we use our straight edge. Go through that point. And notice how mine is slightly off. See that little tiny orange triangle in between my lines? That's what I'm going to call my point. Because I am just a scotch off. And that's probably because I'm a human. Right, like even up here on the screen, pixels, like if I'm five pixels off, it'll be slightly off. I did it again and it was like perfect. There you go. So angle bisectors use the one arc, then two arcs off of that. See, the annoying thing is when there's like so many lines you can't, like you make a line and then as soon as you lift it off, it's just gone. Oh yeah, I what? made a mistake somewhere. I can't draw a line! <laughs> Why is it so hard, baby? No, not a line, like the circle line. If I did it, I did it for you. Okay, so I must have done something wrong. Oh, because that's okay. That's a bit, that's a bit. I've done Ooh. something wrong, and I know I've done something wrong, oh my god. Oh, that's because I started in a bad Alright, are we comfortable with angle bisectors? Oh, yeah. wait, hold on. I like the yes, no, wait, hold on. So this, if I then huh, have any hope that I did it right, I can put my point on here. I can extend this out to one of the sides. Or, or a vertice that's close. Isn't this in the center? Yeah, but it should have the vertices. I was waiting to see if anyone was paying attention. I was going to draw that and then it was going to be too. So if I draw this, because we're tempted by vertices, that's not my in center circle. 
right? So that shows me, oh, it's not the vertice, it's actually the closest side. So guys, if you just follow one of your angle bisectors, that's your perfect line. Follow one of your angle bisectors, go out to where it meets the edge, draw that circle, it should be pretty close to perfectly fit. Wait, you're here now, and I just figured out where they all line with your head. <laughs> so you found your point of concurrency. Now put your point to point on that point, and make a circle. What's your point of concurrency? How big do I get to? Because you have two points. Follow okay, one of your angle bisectors. So the how big, that's what I was just showing you guys. Don't fall into the temptation of using a vertice. Follow that angle bisector. Yeah. Use that to get like on that. And that will get to the same thing. Mine doesn't fit also. Whoa. And here's the tiny bit. You should and this is flexing. Actually, guys, I really dislike these plastic ones. They actually flex like this. Like you're putting too much force on them. Um, one trick for this, guys, this doesn't have to be perfectly lined up. We're just talking about general tricks. If you manipulate where your pencil is, depending on how you want that to enforce things down, check it. Because if I make this a tiny bit longer, when I open this, I'm poking down, and this has a lot of force. If I make this a tiny bit shorter, I can poke down hard with my pointy leg, and then just angle into this. But it's all whatever you preference. And actually, a lot of times, I want multiple sheets of paper. How's my circle? Just so okay, this can actually stack into it. And then the other issue with David is look how big his point is compared to the point I'm putting on. So we have to guess where the middle of that circle, of like that big point you made is. That's that's the issues that we're facing. You're fine, but that's where our human See, error comes in. Teeny tiny <laughs> yeah, no, I used robots, and I'm still slightly off. I think I did good because I'm going to basically. Mine is out. It's because we got a teeny tiny triangle and then I put the point in the circle. The point is that you can't make it work. Really? Oh, the point is that you can't be perfect. Here's what this really creates, though. Here's what this really creates. I want to go into math one and be like. I wonder how many times I can say, "Here's what this really creates." Yeah, do it. Probably, probably no. Here's what this really creates. Here's what this really creates. If we have a circle in the middle of our triangle, then these angle bisector lines that are still pointing out, like this, from that point. Out to here is what? Oh, it's a thing. Oh, it's a thing. Scientific. And this, well, sorry, I'm drawing the wrong way, but this would be a radius. This would be like, we've got radii, right? Now we can work with radii inside the circle, and that will lead us to more cool discoveries. Hmm. Okay, I'm feeling confident. Nobody, I want to be confident. All right, now I am going to probably try to run us through 8-6. Okay, what lines are shown here? F, C, B, E. What are those lines? What type of lines are they? The angle bisector. No. No. Perpendicular thing. No. Perpendicular bisector. <laughs> no. I just how did I you said it's perpendicular. Is it early neighbor that somehow got it into mine? No. Oh, they're medians. That's not they're fine. medians. Which oh, we're so still kind of debating are medians angle bisectors. Which I'm not going to give that answer right now because we're gonna do some more exploration. Can Google give us that answer? Well, if we try to compare the triangles, you I would like to say no because this line is a lot So we know these are called medians. We know confidently these are called medians. Hold up, hold up, hold up. What if I then connect F and E? B. B. That makes a little triangle. Where is the T? It's here. 
So you need I don't to know what I just did. Well, sorry, you need no, to go so line check tonight and go through the opposite. Hey, really? We now have two similar triangles, and actually, not just similar, but similar by a scale factor of two. Oh, because we know that if FA, if FA is half of FB, AE is half of AC, and FE, we could now justify by side angle side, must be half of BC. So literally, when we connect the line created by the median points, or the midpoints, whichever you want to call them, we create a similar triangle that is one half the size of the original. Um, prove, yeah, we could prove it. The ratios would be similar. We could do all that. This last time it was supposed to take two days, it's effectively taking three days. Okay. Well, welcome to Europe. So, anyway. our only, hey, I saw three minutes at least. I, I saw five minutes technically. Well, our yeah. confusion that still exists. Yeah. Why aren't, or can you justify, excuse me, medians being or not being angle bisect? Because we have a couple minutes to play with things. What well, question? Just do like the medians and the angle bisectors are the same, and if they're not the same, we'll then just cover the cross sides. Well, we actually go through this double force. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Probably Pythagoras had his hand in it. Okay. Pythagoras. Okay. Pythagoras. 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 So this is a forty-five, forty-five, ninety. Wait. Ooh, so yes. our homework is would that still be eight point one? The question is not how can we move on. Actually, okay, we'll keep investigating this on future days. In 812, let's chat about that really quick so we have a, a jump start. Yeah, eight, or 821. Two, one. Sorry, sit down real quick. Wait, that was only one? Yeah, so triangle eight. constructions are the entire first section of chapter 8. That's it. That and was your first section. Only that was the first. This is going to be a lot more chapters. Mm -hmm. uh, we have four chapters to do still this year, so yeah, we need this chapter to go faster. Hopefully, 8.2 section will go very quickly because it deals with angle sums of polygons. So, oh, we all, at least I'm hoping, because we've kind of lived through that like math transition period and because you had Mr. Paul as a teacher, he's amazing, probably are somewhat aware of how the amount of sides of a polygon relate to the uh, sum of its interior angles. Do we remember how? So sides, um, angle sum. So you said three sides is 180. Four sides is 360. Five sides would be 540. So in general, what could we say then? What could our rule be? If we say the sides is like, I don't know, n number of sides. When you add a side, you have to add 180 degrees to it. So you're saying 180 is an important number. Mm -hmm. I agree that it's whenever you add a side, but whenever we add a side... Times n minus 1. Ooh, oh, n minus yeah. 1. Because n minus My eyebrow can't go any higher. Oh, um, <laughs> 5. N minus n to the... Um, what is n here? Three. N minus 2. Ah, n minus 2. So tomorrow, all we'll do is probably a quick, like, hey, let's make sure we're comfortable with all this, and try to do 821 and 822 in the same day. Because 821 is essentially getting to this point of any, hold on, any <laughs> polygon. What makes a polygon? Though? Um, it has the closed. Closed? Um, no curved lines. No curves, right? Cur Closed, yeah. straight edges. Any polygon follows this rule. Yeah. Any polygon. This then is how we'll start talking about what if we had a 99 gone? Oh, right? Like a 99 sided shape. But you said it's pretty much what, what can I not make a 99 gone? I could make a 99 gone. Now, what you're thinking of is a regular 
99 gun, right? Where all the sides are the same. You could make an irregular 99 gun. Wait. 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 